I'm Laura and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to the first video in my 2023 collection overview. In this video I'm going to be going over primers, concealers, setting sprays and foundation and powder if I haven't mentioned that. But basically all the base products in this video. I will be doing a light declutter, not a huge one. Um, but I have gotten to a point where there are just things I'm just not going to use. It has been a very long time since I've gone through my co my collection with the intent of decluttering. But I am just... I'm not going to be brutal, but I'm going to be honest. So, starting with setting sprays. I'm just going to get those guys out. So as far as I'm aware, these are the last seven setting sprays that I own, um, which is crazy because seven is a lot of setting sprays to own. Um, I remember picking most of these up back in 2020 when I was going to do my five year no buy and I was like, these will definitely last me five years. I was like, well, will they last with me like three? <laughs> definitely. So. I am fairly happy with these setting sprays as is. I have two of the Dewey from Collection, which I really enjoy, and I have four of the Hyaluronic Fix from Revolution. Um, they are at varying stages of use. This one's almost empty. This one's been lightly used, and this one is almost empty. But this Mark Magics is like hairspray on my face, and I really don't enjoy it. Um, I have tried decanting it into a nicer mister, but it still just does not, it's just not nice on my face. So I'm just not going to use it anymore and it is going to leave my collection, leaving me with these six right here. My Hyaluronic Fix from Revolution and my two Dewey. And as I say, there are two that are almost finished, so um, pretty soon this will be down to four um and i'm pretty happy with that number um i have pulled out my uh, inventory and looked at my numbers from last year i did have 15 last year so getting down to seven does seem rather dramatic but in that i was including these sparkle sprays from makeup revolution which um I don't think I will use personally. I'm gonna like give them to the kids um, because they literally just spray glitter all over the place and don't do anything for my makeup. Um, but I think I was also possibly including um, water mists in this. Um, so when I do the overall inventory numbers, um, I will look back at the previous in-depth video and find out what where this number came from and have it corrected for the um the final figures at the end of the year. Um but yeah, there is that. We are going from 7 to 6 and possibly down to 4 and I'm very happy with that. <clears throat> Going out of order slightly, I'm going to dip into powders just to get them out of the way. In my previous inventory, I had seven press powders and 25 loose powders. So as it stands, I currently have one, two, three, four press powders. Um, I know I have finished one. So I don't know where the other two sort of factor in here. So I'll have to do a bit digging, find out where those numbers are coming from. And then in terms of loose powder, I did have 25. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. No, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 
there's 16 here I know I am missing two I'm missing the peach one of this and the Chanel um, but I don't know where that 25 number has come from I really really don't have I been overestimating oh no here's the peach one But have I been over counting how much makeup I own or miscategorizing things or I've missed things in the move? I don't know. But either way, let's look at what we have here because there are things I want to maybe possibly get rid of. Possibly. Um, so this is Colour Correcting Pearls from Avon. They're actually really nice um what i think i may have been doing is counting these but either way we'll come back to that in a second these are color correcting pearls i really really like them they're they're just color correcting pearls they're a really nice sort of setting finishing powder but i often mix them with the um finishing pearls regular ones which I have recently taken to making my own blend of. In here I have, um, short backstory, I used to be an Avon lady, bought a load of stock for stalls over uh, 2020 and then, you know, lockdown happened so I got stuck with all the stock. So I've been working my way through the makeup y part of the stock. I'm making these beautiful um sort of Guerlain meteorites-esque finishing powders which I enjoy so in here is mixing like three different tones of finishing pearls and a couple of different tones of bronzing pearls and some illuminating pearls so I think the number the high number might be counting all of the jars that are mixed in here because technically that means all of those powders are on the go at the same time um but yeah, if that is the case, I will rejig that number and uh, yeah. Um, but using these as a finishing powder, you do actually go through them quite quickly. They are quite soft pearls and the powder crumbles off quite nicely and it gives a really good finish. So I do enjoy those. I do plan on keeping them and working my way through the other ones I have. Um, these two look like they're the same powder, they really aren't. This one is the true number seven perfect light loose powder. This one is actually the Sicily powder in number two. And it's like a beautiful luminescence kind of setting, not a setting powder, like a finishing powder. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna keep both of those. I'm gonna work my way through them and um, get them all used up. Same with this guy. This is the um, Golden Hour. Yeah, Golden Hour from Becca. Very similar to the Sicily powder. Um, if I just focused on it diligently enough, I would probably get it finished up. The ones that will probably take me a lifetime to use up are these Ben Nye powders. I have Super White, Pretty Pink, Rose Petal, and buff buff i actually tend to press um like i'll mix it with a bit of super white and a bit of pink and i will press it and um use it that way or i have like a bit of it mixed in an empty laura mercier jar and use it loose um i also have lace from revolution we have this clarence one from um, Clarence one from Clarence. What am I even saying? It is the Multi Eclat powder in shade number three, dark. Um, I was featuring this in a project pan video a while ago, and in the video dumped half out of my sink by accident. So there's only like half of the jar left now. Um, less than. Again, if I just focused on it, it would get used up fairly, fairly quickly. So um, I'm not too fussed about that guy. This one, um, 
my little girl Rosie got at and dumped half of it out in um, in the girls room. This is my Laura Mercier secret brightening powder. There is again not very much of this left now. Um, I, I don't know how she managed to get the sifter off with her tiny little child hands. Oh there we go. Um, so there's not a whole lot of this left. Um, again if I just was a bit more diligent with it it would be used up. My hands are just getting covered in powder now. Um, and then we come to these guys. The Revolution powders are nice enough. We have the peach and then we have the coconut. This one hasn't even been opened. Um, but yeah, they're nice enough powders. They're nothing right home about should I keep them? I think I might because this this peach one is pretty much almost done as it is so I think I might just carry on with them and as I said I do have a Chanel powder I don't know where it is but definitely keeping the Chanel powder. These three however are kind of like um the HD style powders and um, this revolution powder is okay um, it just says translucent loose setting powder but I this is the one that sort of leaks out of the lid of the product so yeah there is that um, but overall it does it is nice in the skin it does set nicely it's a very nice velvety finish these two however are true sort of um what was the term they called them silica powders these are more true silica powders we have the mark um mark hd finishing powder and we have the rms beauty unpowder yes and these are quite intense powders. Like you would have to use a really, really, really light touch with them. Um, kind of thinking about maybe mixing with a Ben Nye powder possibly. Not so sure. Maybe try pressing them, having an, like, cause they're quite mattifying. So they might be a nice thing to have pressed for on the go these two particular powders I just I don't I don't quite know because I finished one HD powder before I finished the elf HD powder before and I really was not keen on it especially not towards the end um <coughs> goodness gracious that caught my throat horribly I'll hang on them on to them for just now and um we'll decide at a future date. Um, in terms of the press powders, I think there might be a few other powders I was counting as press powders, like finishing press powders, like um, this Laura Mercier powder here. This is the Candle Glow and it is like an illuminating press powder and I started using other press powders as finishing powders. For example, um, I have one. For example, this Revolution Bronzer Reloaded in Holiday Romance I use as a sort of illuminating finishing powder in the same way I would use the Laura Mercier. But do I count this as a press powder? Hmm. Not so sure. So we'll, we'll just stick with designated press powders for now. Um, but the Laura Mercier one, as you can see, I have... As you can hopefully see, I have used a fair amount of this product. It is very nice. Definitely keeping hold of that. We have the Matte Maker, which I had to repress from Maybelline. It is a really nice workhorse product. It is very similar to like your Rimmel Stay Matte, that kind of thing. Same with the number seven uh, Cream Touch. Very reminiscent of your Max Factor Cream Puff Powder. 
Um, they're just very basic bog standard powders. This is the Avon Flawless Mattifying Powder. Again, it's just a very, very basic powder. I will keep them because there's no point throwing something away just to repurchase it again, but whether I repurchase them after the fact remains to be seen. I'll probably continue to purchase the Cream Touch one because it's definitely the best value for money because you get 20 grams of product in it. For At the time when I was purchasing it, it was $7.99. I'm assuming it's not $7.99 anymore, but here you go. Those are my powders. I have four pressed powders and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, plus the Chanel 18. I need to recount. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Yes. I have 18 if you include the Chanel loose powders. I'm not going to get rid of, rid of any of them at this moment. Next up, we're going to go into primers. Now, in my last inventory, I had 30 primers and... I haven't counted them yet, but I already know there's going to be some slight change here because I have purchased, I have used up, and I already know there are some that are going to get declared. So let's have a quick count at how many are here. We have one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So according to my counting, there are 25 here, which is already a reduction. Um, I know I've used up a bunch this year, so that is awesome. I already know there are some that are going to go away and uh, well, some that I wanted to clutter. And there are some that are almost finished. So yeah, this is going to be a very productive segment. These three here are variations of the same sort of product. We have the Bobbi Brown Vitamin and Rich Face Base, which... I am almost done with. So this is definitely one that's going to get moved out within the next six months. Um, similar product, the Lisa Armstrong from Avon, all about the base priming moisturizer. Um, again, I'm about the halfway mark with this guy as well. Um, this is much a much smaller jar. Uh, this is a 50 ml jar. This is a 25 ml jar. Um, so yeah, it, you're bound to go through it a lot quicker. I don't think they make this anymore either. I think it was a very short-lived collab. And then we have this beautiful, beautiful creation, the Miracle Cream from Revolution Pro, which they now do in a jumbo size of 100ml, which I might pick up once I've finished all three. Um, I've only used a little bit of this one. So once I finish those two, I will be focusing mostly on this guy as well. And it is a very, very similar product to the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. Also, if you get a jar of the Nivea Soft Cream, very similar effect, just so you know. Um... Speaking of things that aren't primers being used as primers, this um, men, Nivea Men Pro Shave Balm, this is a big 100ml bottle. I've had this for a very long time and I think it might be bad now. And again, I'm not going to go through this whole, whole bottle. I might repurchase a little size, like a 30ml one, because I know it comes in much smaller bottles. Um because it's a very, it's it's a dupe for like the Face Finity foundation primer, which I loved. Um, so this guy is going to be getting decluttered along with this guy. Um, this is the Revolution Glass Liquid Skin Illuminating Primer. It is only illuminating because of this stuff here. Um, which as I swirl it, you may see the liquid picking it up and 
dispensing it through the solution. You have to really, really shake this to get it to uh, go everywhere. And um, whenever I've used this, it's just kind of made my face feel like really slimy, kind of like the worst version of silicon primer. Um, I don't like it. I don't like what it does. I, I'm pretty sure it made my foundation pill as well. And the way that this, um, the illuminating stuff separates and settles all the time, it just, no, puts me off. So I will be getting rid of the glass liquid skin and some of these poor filling product type ones, uh, the Clarins Instant Smooth. I have two little sample jars of this that I've had for absolutely forever um but I have other products I like better it's just very awkward to use in this putty like state very similar to I'm guessing the elf putty primer um but I'm just gonna get rid of them because I've had them for a very long time same with the pore minimizer from Smashbox had it for just ages and it just I never reach for it. it. It's always the back of my mind. Uh, the Mark Magic Face Protector, again, it's a very similar product, but I really don't like what it does to my skin. I really, really, really don't like it. Uh, it just sort of pulls the foundation into my pores, so just, just no, no. And same with this guy. This is just really, really old. It's the Skin Revined zone treatment. It's more of a skincare product really and if I'd used it as a skincare product I might have gotten on better with it. It kind of needs to like absorb into the skin. It was very expensive for what it is at the time. It's probably even more expensive now. Um, but yeah so we'll just get rid of those. Um, everything else I think I will be keeping. Um, I have two of the lasting finish from Rimmel, which is very similar to the Facefinity um, primer, which they no longer make. So I'm, I'm happy to have both of these. I will keep them, I will use them, I will love them and enjoy them. Um, I have two of these blur sticks, which are what I'm sort of replacing those Clarins Smooth, what are they called? Instant Smooth primers. So I'm replacing the Instant Smooth primers with these Stick Blur from Revolution. It smells like watermelon. Really, really nice. Um, I I was very apprehensive about these and then I got the small sizes just to try them and thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. I haven't used the illuminating one yet. Uh, the bright one. Um, it just says Universal, Universal Face Primer. Um, and this one's Universal Face Primer with vitamins. So I'm assuming it's just the same, but without the the vitamins infused and without the watermelon smell. I have my three um, green primers, um, the Airbrush Away from number seven, which has sort of like a skin smoothing quality to it. That's really nice. They have the anti redness one from L'Oreal, which is very water-like primer. It's very, very thin in consistency. If they still make this, I will probably repurchase it when it when it's finished. And then we have um, the Revolution Pro one, which is a very classic consistency um, green color correcting primer. It's more of like a green color corrector than a primer to be honest it has like hydrating properties like it won't it won't dry out your skin like um some traditional green color correctors would but um yeah so definitely keeping those um other ones that are defo keeps are my becca's um the packaging is starting to go a bit on some of them i have two of the backlight priming filters one that is unopened one that is um over halfway used so I will be keeping those using those and enjoying those until they're they're done and we have the first light priming filter um which is kind of the same it's just not as illuminating it's very nice for the sort of like that fresh dewy vibe but again you can't get it anymore so 
we will use it while we can. Um, glow and fi fix and glow, sorry, from Revolution. This is just a um, a very illuminating primer. Really like it. Um, especially on days when I just want that extra oomph. It's also really nice as a mixer in with foundations. So we'll keep that guy and finish it up. The Hydra Matte Primer is, um, I've, I've not got much left of this either, so it's going to be gone within the next six months too. Um, it's kind of like the lasting finish from Rimmel, but a bit more hydrating, to, to say the least, <laughs> to, to just be over simple with it. I have the All Hours Foundation Primer from YSL which again is very of the ilk of the Nivea post shave balm, lasting finish, face finity, that kind of thing. It's just very, very thin. It's almost like glue for your foundation. And lastly, I have these two. We have um, the Lancome for when I do want a more intense sort of um, skin smoothing, pore filling, um, daily do. And then we have the Radiance Boosting from number seven apologies for the upset child i swear i'm almost done it just has these sort of like light reflecting that sort of emphasizes radiance and glow in the skin and um yeah it's really nice skin smoothing and um yeah so I'm going to take a short break here and come back with the concealers after I've done my little mama duty. <laughs> so I had to abandon and come back on a different day. Um, so I have decluttered the two Clarins primers and these further five primers, which leaves me with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen primers left. Which I think's really good. So I'm gonna pop these away and bring out the concealers to have a look at them. Right, so here we have my concealers in my last inventory. They were sitting at around 37, which I know will be a changed number because I have purchased, I have used up. So let's just quickly count how many there are here. So we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. 28, 30, and the 8 will come from the Revolution palette, which I can't locate at this current moment. So, am I going to get rid of any? Who knows? I do, of course, want to just only have what I'm going to use. Um, none of these, as far as I'm aware, are bad. Um... I have had a cursory glance over them whilst getting everything out and everything seems to be fine. Nothing seems to be split or funny looking or anything like that. Um, but do I want to get rid of any? Um, I'm kind of tempted to get rid of these um, power stay ones. I know I can use them fairly quickly because they're only three mils. But at the same time, do I want to hold on to them just to have higher figures at the end of the year? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I do definitely have favourites in here. Um, I love my Tarte Shape Tapes. I have three of them at various stages of use. Some of them are over halfway done, which is awesome. Actually, yes, there is something I want to get rid of. This, this Avon stick i'm just i'm just not gonna use it i always like the idea of these stick concealers i like the revlon hd one that was like this but this is not like the revlon hd so we are definitely going to get rid of this one <clears throat> so i like my tart ones um i have my nars radiant creamy concealer and then i have the 
Ultimate Radiant Under Eye Concealer from Revolution, and there is the Brightening Illuminator, which is a similar product from Avon. Really enjoy those, so we are going to keep them. <clears throat> Again, these products are all essentially the same. They are all versions of the Efficerness from Lancome. We have the Efficerness, we have the NYX Gotcha Concealer, we have the two Revolution Pro Concealers, and then we have the Ultimate Coverage Crease Proof Concealer. Apologies for the background noise, but for some reason, my kids cannot have a conversation that does not result in someone screaming at some point. And if I don't film this now, it's just not going to get done. So I apologize. We have the... We have the Smashbox HD concealer, which I am almost finished with and really, really enjoy anyway. So we're going to hold on to that guy. Um, we have the XX Revolution concealer um, in zero, 0.05. Ooh. Um, and I do actually really, really enjoy that, especially for brightening under the eyes. We have the HD concealer from Makeup Forever, which will take the place of Smashbox when it's finished. Um, these L'Oreal ones are just really nice sort of all over face concealers. They're true match. They're sort of like a foundation-y consistency, but with a fuller coverage. I have the two um, PowerStay concealers from Avon. I don't know if they still make this or not because I haven't really looked at what Avon do um, recently. Um, but these are supposed to be along the same lines as like Estee Lauder Double Wear. Um, they're not, <laughs> but I do like them. Um, and I will, like I say, there's only three mils of product in them, so I should power through them quite quickly. Um, the Lasting Perfection from Collection, which I loved this when I used to use it before. Uh, this is in the shade Extra Fair. Um, I haven't had a huge chance to, to use this all that much, so we will, we will get through that. Uh, the Conceal and Defines... Um, the, the Revolution ones. I did finish my Conceal and Define. I have the Conceal and Define Infinite, which is like the Conceal and Define, but a bit more hydrating. Um, really like that one. And then I have three of the Conceal and Hydrates, two in C1 and one in 0 0.5, um, one of which has been used a fair amount. So um, I'm going to keep hold of all three of those and work my way through them. Uh, this one hasn't been opened yet, so I haven't had a chance to try it out. It is the Eyebright, which is sort of um, supposed to be like a Touche Cla type deal or like a Charlotte Tilbury product dupe. So I'm looking forward to trying that. The um, Born This Way concealer from Too Faced, which I use so much in 2022. No, yeah, 2022. I used it a lot in 2022. Um, and this year. Really enjoy it. Totally going to keep hold of it. Same with the All Hours found, um, All Hours Concealer from YSL. This is perfect for on-the-go touch-ups because it's a slightly darker shade. It's like the colour my foundation goes once it's oxidised. So it's nice for little touch-ups like that. And then we have the Lift and Illuminate Serum Concealer, which I really like. I'm sure I have the foundation that goes along with this as well. Um, so there is that. And then we have these two pot concealers, which is why everything is covered in, in, in products. I will have to go back and wipe everything down. This is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer, which um, has been dug into by small child fingers. I haven't actually used this myself. Um, so yeah, there is that. And then we have the um, Studio Finish Concealer in NC10 from MAC, which I've used a handful of times. Um, but yeah, I'm going to keep hold of it and use it up over the course of time. We will see how many I can get through over the year. I have decluttered one, which isn't a whole lot. Um, and I'm also keeping hold of that palette. I'll 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 work out what I'm gonna do with that palette of of concealers at some point. So, yes.
we are still at 37 concealers. Yay. Okay, so according to this count, I have 74 foundations. Um, I know I have finished at least a foundation this year. Um, so I'm almost certain there is a miscalculation somewhere. There's product missing somewhere. Because um, there are two things in here that are technically not foundation or I didn't count as foundation before but hey ho let's just dive right in and yeah let's just dive right in first of all this foundation mixer um from NYX it's white foundation mixer which I've never really used I keep saying oh I'm gonna use it for like mixing um lightening darker foundations like none of my foundations are too There, there's like one or two foundations here that are a bit too dark for me because they're from my kit. But generally speaking, none of my foundations are too dark for me. They're, if anything, some of them are too light for me. Hence why I have slightly darker foundations. So the NYX foundation mixer can go. And whilst we're on the topic of NYX products, these are very long discontinued NYX products. The HD one, I do love it. I do love it. I'm kind of tempted just to keep this and finish up. The Invincible, I've never really cracked into. It's again, long-term discontinued. <sighs> I don't even want to waste my time with it. So I'll keep the HD one because I know I like it. I know it's still good, um, but the Invincible can go. Um, other product that is right here is these lasting performances from Max Factor. I'm gonna weed these out and just get rid of them. I like them, I enjoy them. They're something that Max Factor will probably always have. So I can always come back to it again. These are from my kit. And golly, my voice, my voice, my voice. But yeah, Max Factor will probably always have this foundation. I can always come back to it and buy another tube. Um, I think this might be the product that's missing, if I'm honest. Um, cause I'm finding the 106, the 102, the 105, but I'm not finding the one that is my shade, which is the 100. Um, and I know I didn't finish it, so I don't know where it is. Um, if we come across it again, we will declutter that also. So that is another three foundations I'm going to get rid of, but I'm also going to get rid of a few other Max Factor foundations because again they're long time discontinued and um, I've just never really got on with them either. I've wanted to mix them and stuff but they just were not working and I'm going to admit defeat and just get rid of them. So we have the Ageless Elixir Miracle Foundation. When it worked, it worked so beautiful. It was beautiful on the skin. It was this glorious luminescence. It was like silk on the skin. It was beautiful but now it's just kind of uh, and yuck. The Skin Luminizer Foundation, never really got on with it to be honest. I tried mixing it with other foundations but I just, eh, eh. And then we have the Miracle Match Foundation which I thought was going to be like the face finity but a bit more moisturizing. Um, I can't remember what it's like. Uh, it says on it blur and nourish. Um, I couldn't tell you anything about it. That's that's how little I know about this product. So I'm just going to part with all three of them. So we are up at eight foundations I'm getting rid of. Oh, crikey, guys, crikey. I'm also going to part ways with some of my Avon ones. Um, these true um, 
True Color Flawless Foundations. I have two. This one is in the shade Porcelain. I have another one. Um, this one is the Power Stay, but yeah, I'm getting rid of this one as well. It was supposed to be like the Estee Lauder Double Wear and again, just, just isn't, just isn't. But I like the concealer more than I like the foundation. So um, I found the foundation broke down quite quickly. But there should be another one of these um, true colors. I'm sure there is. Here is the other true color in the shade medium beige. Um, was a uh, leftover from one of my final orders as an Avon wrap. Um, manufactured in February of 2020. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to get rid of all three of these as well. Um, and I think that's the glaringly, no, there is one other glaringly obvious one that I want rid of and it isn't a MAC product and it's one that I've just never gotten on with. It is the Mineralize foundation that I got given as a gift from a friend. And um, yeah, I just don't like it. I don't use it. Not gonna keep it so it can go. Eight, 10, 12. Wow, that's 12 foundations I'm getting rid of. That's insane. But whatever, whatever, we're doing it. Um, things I'm keeping, we have this cushion foundation from Lancome. I'm going to try and bust this open at some point in 2024 and get use out of it. Uh, same with these uh, Avon Compact Conceal uh, foundations. I actually really like these. Um, they are the true Avon True Flawless. This one is matte. This one is just the standard creamed powder foundation. The packaging is duff, but um, it's nice to have as a sort of touch up in my makeup bag so I do keep hold of those and the a new one which has had a child's finger strike through it um but we're gonna keep hold of those three there's also a couple of other there's also two other Avon foundations I'm gonna keep hold of these are the a new age transforming foundations they're like serum foundations both in the shade ivory um but yeah, I'm going to keep hold of these and use them up because they are really pretty on the skin. Um, I'm going to keep all of my Smashbox ones. I have three Smashbox foundations. These are from my kit. Um, these are the Studio Skin foundations. I have the shade 1.1. .1. 0 0.5 and 2.4 um 2.4 is really really dark it was more for bridesmaids who'd been fake tanning but again it comes in handy for foundations that are too light um so keep hold of all three of those and this 1.1 is almost finished anyways so we'll be working our way through those <clears throat> being as i've declared one MAC foundation already. We'll just quickly address the other MAC foundations that I own. So I have four other MAC foundations here. We have the Studio Sculpt, which is almost, almost finished. I just, I, ca I, I can't bear to part with it when it's this close to being finished, even though it's really quite old. Um, so I am going to keep it, get it finished up and possibly repurchase it. Um, maybe we'll see how much MAC foundations cost these days. Um, but it is a gorgeous finish. It is beautiful blending, blurring. It is actually kind of, it's kind of similar to, um, the satin liquid from Maybelline. So maybe I don't need to repurchase the MAC Studio Scope. I could just have the, the satin liquid if it's still a product. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll come to that bridge when we cross it. Um, we have the Studio Fix Fluid, which is just a is a, a very good workhorse product. I don't want to get rid of that. Um, the Pro Longwear Foundation, I, I think I've only used it a handful of times. So I'm going to keep it and um, try it out a bit more. But this guy, the Pro Longwear Nourishing Waterproof Foundation, totally, totally keeping this guy. Um, I don't know of any drugstore foundation that is similar to this product, but this is a dupe of the Tom Ford 
waterproof foundation, which again, I'm keeping. Not leaving my possession, no sir, no ma'am. Um, I have a bunch of number seven products here, so let's just quickly go over them. I have five number seven foundations. We have the Hydroluminous Moisturizing Foundation, which is beautiful, beautiful. I finished the concealer that goes along with this. Again, beautiful. Um, Super Stay, the Stay Perfect Super Light Foundation. I love this product. It's very, it's like a water weight foundation, similar to that of like the Chanel Perfection Lumiere Velvet and others of its of its ilk. Really, really enjoy this product. If they still make it, I will probably repurchase it once this is finished. Uh, the All-in-One Foundation from Protect and Perfect, I don't think I've tried. I think I've maybe used it once, but not enough to give a formed opinion on. Uh, the Lift and Luminate, the Serum Foundation. Really, really enjoy this. This is beautiful, especially on, um, I hate to call my skin mature, but I am 34. Um, but on not youthful, straight out of puberty skin, shall we say. <laughs> for, for anyone who's the other side of 25, this is beautiful. And then Stay Perfect is a really nice long wearing, um, almost mattifying foundation that isn't gonna like dry you out. So I'm gonna keep hold of that guy as well. Um, I have some L'Oreal foundations here. Finally able to get the fresh wear from Infallible. I have the True Match Nude Serum and the Infallible 24 Hour Matte, which I've, I think I've used a couple of times. I'm not entirely sure, so I'm gonna keep hold of that and just test it out a little bit. Um, the Nude Serum, love it, love it, love it, love it. And I can't remember what I thought of the Infallible Fresh Wear. So I'm gonna keep hold of it too and just test it out. Cause I mean, I, I'm, I'm doing very well at parting ways with foundations. So um, I'm not gonna begrudge myself holding on to a few just because I wanna try them. Um, I'm gonna quickly run through a bunch of high end things just because they're here. Um, right, first of all, we have my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, which I've only purchased the, no, I didn't purchase it this year. I purchased it last year, but I've only started using it this year. Um, I've used it a handful of times, really, really love it. I know it's supposed to be more of like a priming product, but I use it more as like a tinted moisturizer BB cream foundation dealy do. So love it, keeping hold of it. Um, my two Urban Decays, my Urban Decay Naked Skin, which is a long discontinued. I'm gonna work my way through it because it reminds me of the um, YSL Touche Claw Foundation, which I don't know if they still make, um, but I love the Touche Claw Foundation. Um, love this finish as well. The All Nighter Foundation. I remember being really full coverage. Um, not unlike the Kat Von D foundation, but nicer than the Kat Von D foundation. So I'm gonna keep the all nighter and I'm gonna declutter the Kat Von D. The Bare Minerals is really, really old. I do like it, but it's like the packaging has like separated and stuff and it feel like some of the products leaked into the packaging. And it's just, I don't want it. I don't want it anymore. So we are parting ways with the Bare Minerals. I have my three Giorgio Armani foundations. We have the Power Fabric, the Luminous Silk and the Lasting Silk. All of them I love. I just wish I could give them more attention. And now that I'm purging my collection a little bit, that might that might occur, that might occur. I will say the Luminous Silk is my favorite out of the three, but we'll we'll test out them, test them out a bit more. They are all three in in the same shade. They're all the shade two, but you can you can see that they're not all the same color. It's mad, it's mad. But there we are. Um, the Super Balanced from Clinique. 
silk makeup. Oh, it is really, really nice. Again, this is a product that I wish I could just give more attention to and hopefully we are going to be able to do that in the near future. Um, these two are also both going to be keeps. Actually, these three are all going to be keeps. We have the Perfection Lumiere from Chanel, the Perfection Lumiere Velvet, and the Matte Velvet Plus from Makeup Forever, which I don't know if they make any of these anymore. I really, really don't. Um, but I'm going to keep hold of them because I love them, I enjoy them, and I want to keep them. <clears throat> the Clinique um, Chubby in the Nude. There isn't much of this left. I am going to keep it just more for like touch-ups on the go, um, keeping the makeup bag type deal. I don't think this is a very on its own foundation. It doesn't hold its weight. Um, Essie Lauder Double Wear, I'd be mad to get rid of that. Um, same with the uh, Tinted Doll Ultra. I've been using this foundation for uh, 14 years. Um, just repurchasing it, so I'm gonna keep hold of both bottles because it is it is it is holy grail. Um, Clarins Everlasting Foundation. It's like the Essie Lauber Double Wear and the Tinted Doll Ultra sort of like had a baby, but it's got like different colors, different undertones, and I just I love it all of its own. Same with the Dior Forever Foundation. Just love it. I just love it and I've been using it. It was like my only foundation I've used like in the last 12 months. So totally keep on hold of this guy. And then we have these two that are a little bit separated but I know once they get mixed back together, they'll be fine. The Born This Way foundation from Too Faced. I've used a fair amount of it as you can maybe see. Um, really enjoy it. It's a really nice finish, really nice coverage. And then we have the NARS. I don't even know what this is. All Day Luminous Weightless Foundation. It's like one of those water weight foundations, but in a pump bottle. And it definitely needs a major shake up before you use it. But I'm definitely gonna keep hold of that guy as well. <coughs> Hi, <coughs> sleeping baby. Yes, yeah. right out, come on Pops. It's so, my battery's dead anyway. Okay, I just stopped for a moment to recharge everything. So we're just on the last few bottles of um, drugstore foundation. Um, so I'll leave all the revolution stuff to last and just do everything else all together. So here we have, we have the Technic Pro Glow Lightweight Foundation. It is a gorgeous, illuminating foundation. I really enjoy using this. I'm going to keep this one. The Revel Revlon Airbrush Effect Foundation. Um, it used to be called the HD Foundation. I don't know if they still make this anymore, but this is a really nice formula. I will keep hold of it and use it up, um, depending on whether it's comparable to anything else in my collection depend whether I repurchase this or repurchase something similar. The Oriflame, the One Foundation. If there was ever going to be a product that I was going to lighten um, foundation with, if I had something that was too dark, it would be this. This is like the lightest thing I think I could possibly have whilst still being like a skin tone color like it's even way paler than the lightest shade of the um smashbox foundation it is super super light and pale it's lighter even than the giorgio armani so i'm gonna keep hold of this guy in the event i get to the end of this i doubt i'd repurchase it because um, i don't know anyone who sells oriflame and it's pretty pricey so um <laughs> So yeah, that is uh, that. The Lasting Finish from Rimmel. I used to really love the Lasting Finish Nude Foundation, but um, the Lasting Finish is still gorgeous itself. I remember decluttering this and regretting it so, so much. Um, so I have repurchased it. I don't know, I haven't used this bottle yet. It was still, it was still perfectly sealed. Um, so I'm looking forward to busting this open and getting it back on my face. 
And then I have my two Maybelline foundations. Um, we have the Superstay, which I'm about the halfway mark. I have purchased several and gone through several bottles of this foundation. Most likely will probably repurchase it again because it is a really nice, um, affordable, user-friendly foundation. Same with the Dream Satin Liquid. If they still make this, um, this is a new-ish bottle. Again, I've gone through several, well, I've owned several. Usually I end up decluttering them because they go bad. But um, yeah, I will keep hold of this guy and work my way through it. It is a beautiful, um, it just, it looks so nice on the skin. Satin finish, Porelish Perfection. I remember the advert for this was was um, pouring it over a golf ball because it fills in all the, the, pit, the pits in your skin, like pock marks and things, and it just, it looks beautiful on the skin and that brings us to oh no there's one more non revolution and that is the perfect finish from Primark um, this is very very similar to like your Estee Lauder Double Wear uh, uh, Super Stay from Maybelline I will keep this um, I have used a fair amount of it as you can see there is a bit of windowing happening there so we will just work our way through this guy. And for £2.50, it's it's a banging foundation. And that leaves us with the Revolution foundations. So here are my beautiful Revolution foundations. One of which isn't quite a foundation. It is um, a skin boost in the shade Blaze. It was like their first incarnation of... Um, it was either supposed to be a... a, a, a their answer to Oryx Glowlust or the um, Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. But they have since come out with a fully fledged dupe, if you will, of Flawless Filter, which I'm kind of interested in trying. Um, but yeah, that is in here. It's in the shade Blaze. I do also have two other XX products. We have um, the... I'm not sure. One of the, this one is a matte finish. This one is an illuminating finish. And these are the hands of little Rosie putting things in the basket for me, aren't you, darling? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I will be keeping both of those, definitely. My CC Perfection foundations, absolutely keeping these guys. I mean, look at the windowing in this one. Crazy. And there's even a bit of windowing happening in this one. I don't know if this is being discontinued, but it's almost all, always in the sale section. But same with the full cover camouflage foundation. Um, it's almost always in the sale section. But both of these are like favourite foundations. Favourite. I've been using them for um, about five years. Well, I've been using the Pro for five years. The full cover camouflage. And I've been using this one, I would say at least three or four years, definitely. Um, and I will be keeping them all. They are all in my shade. Apart from this one, this is in F6, which I actually swatched out of my hand. And it's, the, the colour change is like negligible. I think it would be like a maybe a tanner shade for me. But not enough to want to get rid of it. And then we have these three, which I will most likely get finished in 2024. We have the uh, Conceal and Define, which I'm almost halfway mark on. Um, full cover, matte finish. I do need to tweak it a little bit because it is a bit too matte for me and my skin. But we will do what we can with it. Uh, conceal and hydrate. Really enjoy the conceal and hydrate um, along with the um, the concealers. Um, and again, I'm, I've, I've made a good dent in this product as it is, so I'm looking forward to getting that one finished. And then lastly, we have the conceal and glow, and this is the illuminating medium to full coverage version, which I think I've only maybe used once or twice. So I'm looking forward to. <laughs> I'm looking forward to trying this guy out a bit more and seeing what I think of it because I don't actually know if they still make this one particular. Yeah? Uh-huh. 
I don't know if they still make this one in particular, but um, yeah. Those are all the ones I'm going to be keeping. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Uh huh. Can I steal a couple back from you for just a little second? Okay, so that is the end of my foundation collection overview and I am getting rid of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen foundation products. By golly, am I impressed with myself. I can't remember the last time I decluttered this much foundation. Um, I'm not going to count what's left over because little lady is having a whale of a time putting them in the basket and I don't want to upset her. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with everything that I've gotten rid of in this segment. Um, the upcoming segments may not be as heavy in the declutter. It's not, um, I'm not doing this with the intention of getting rid of X amount of my stash. It's simply uh, an honest comb through of my collection and parting ways with the products that I do not want, will not use and do not work for me. Um, so yeah. I know this video is a bit choppy, a bit noisy, um, but it's just the way of things in this season of life that we're going through. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will have the next the next section up as soon as possible and um, we will work our way through my stash together. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. You saying bye? Yeah. Bye. <laughs>